Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 25, verse 14. Psalm 25, verse 14. Verse 13, rather. Verse 13. Psalm 25. The Bible says, His soul shall dwell at ease. His soul shall dwell what? At ease. I prophesy that this month there will be ease. Amen. In your life, there will be ease. Amen. In your business, there will be ease. Amen. In your finance, there will be ease. Amen. For your family, there will be ease. Amen. With your children, there will be ease. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Ooh, I receive it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we're grateful for January. We're grateful for February. Thank you, Jesus. But we thank you because the best is yet to come. The Bible says, say unto the righteous, it shall be well with you. Well, thank you because it's well with us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Look, if someone to shake them and say, it's your month of results with ears. Thank you. God bless you. You can have your seats. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord hallelujah amen all right so let's turn our bibles to luke chapter 10 verse 38 luke chapter 10 verse 38 luke chapter 10 verse 38 and we're talking we're talking about the word of god and finding answers through the word of god finding answers through the word of god luke chapter 10 verse 38 the bible says and it came to pass as jesus christ went he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named martha received him into a house and that's very important here the bible says and matter received her into a house and the reason why it matters is this i love it the reason why matter matters is this that's really nice the reason why matter matters on the things that matter praise god that's so nice the reason why matter matters on the things that matter because those that matter did not care about the matter Rhymes right there, rhymes right there, rhymes right there. Praise God. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, and Jesus and Martha received Jesus Christ. And the reason I want to talk about this is that some of you are in spaces where you feel abused. Some people, you know, one time a lady came to me and she was really broken because she felt a clique of friends she belonged to rejected her and she felt abused. She said, how do you genuinely love people? How do you genuinely wish people where we are all friends and they just don't love you back? And one of the things you have to see is this. If you're in a situation in your life where you love people, where you serve people and they don't love you back, they don't really think you belong to them, what they think is not the perfect representation of your value. The fact that they don't accept you does not mean you have no value. You have value, but they are blind to your value. So, because when you love people and they don't love you back, the tendency is for you to think, oh, I don't have value. I don't have to, what to add. But the truth is that you have what to add, but they cannot see that what you have to offer. And is that possible? Look at the story of, look at the story of Joseph. Look at the story of David. The Bible says David's parent didn't, David's parent didn't think it was a big deal. They sent to the backside of the desert. They said, go and live in the backside of the desert. But guess what? When God came, God said, is the one at the backside of the desert we're looking for. So even though his brothers did not see his value, God saw his value. Glory to God. God saw his value. And the reason I'm, I'm saying so is this, and this is a very powerful story I shared in the other serv service. Um, a man wanted to teach his son a very powerful lesson. He gave him a wristwatch. And he says, go to the street and sell your wristwatch. And a lot of you, this thing I'm sharing is very deep because if you're human, you'll have experienced this before. You'll have experienced this at work. You'll have experienced it in your family, in the relationship, where you genuinely love someone, where you genuinely want to serve someone, where you genuinely want to be there for someone, and every love and service and help you do, they don't do it back to you. They rather ignore you. They rather abuse you. They rather treat you like trash. And you're wondering, is there something wrong with me that they don't love you back? The fact that others don't see value in you does not mean that you have no value. 
they are the ones that blind to your value. And David's story explains it perfectly. David's brothers never saw value in David, but it never changed the fact that God saw value in David. So this man, this powerful story, this man wanted to teach his son a lesson. He gave me a wristwatch. And he said, my son, go to the street and try to sell the wristwatch. And when he went to the street, he said, Richard, it was an old wristwatch. The wristwatch, the street said, oh, that's a nice wristwatch. We'll buy it for $100. He came back and said, dad, they offered $100. He said, that's good. He said, go to the pawn shop and get the wristwatch. He went to the pawn shop and they look at the wristwatch. And they said, oh, nice wristwatch. We'll buy it for $200. He said, that's good. He said, then lastly, go to the museum and sell the wristwatch. And when he went to the museum, the museum said, oh, wow. Lovely wristwatch. We beg you. Will you please sell it to us at $45,000? He came back. And his father told him, it's not about the wristwatch. Is the fact that the people cannot perceive the value of the wristwatch. If the people around you can perceive your value, move to the people that can perceive your value. Why stay in a place where they are managing you? Where there are others that will treat you like royalty and a king? Glory to God. The Bible says and Jesus was received into a house. Jesus was not forcing his way. He was received into a house. If you can't see my value, sorry about that. But I know I carry value. If you, you know, and some of you, the, the way you want to force someone to date you, it's horrible. And the reason why is like maybe you don't know you carry value. And if, when someone wants to live your life, the way you break down and you're shattered is also amazing. Because maybe you don't know you carry value. And sometimes, 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 when gold appears, it appears rough. All you need the relationship is to dust you out. And what is inside will come out strong. Someone say hallelujah. So the Bible says in the next verse 39. The Bible says verse 39. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. And very powerful. <laughs> very powerful. I mean, when I, when, I was, when I was just meditating, I just saw a lot of things here. Sometimes when God wants to bless you, I, can we talk? When God wants to help you, it will help you through people. But what I'm saying is that be careful how you treat people. Because when you treat people wrongly, you could have shut a door that you need in the future. And sometimes, it's the people you meet through people that God will use to open the door for you. M Mary did not know Jesus Christ personally like that. It was Martha that had a personal relationship and received him. But the person that received the miracle was Mary. You know why? Martha got carried away with familiarity and was serving. Mary stayed in the place of honor. Gifts can open doors, but it's honor and value that keeps door open. Someone can be impressed with you and say, wow, you are this. But listen to me. Gift does not sustain dollar. It's honor. It's the fact that you know how to talk to people. It's the fact that you know how to value people. It's the fact that you know how to, someone sends you money and they send you money and all of a sudden you put TX. Thanks. Someone, someone choose to be your friend that is high and mighty. All of a sudden, GM, good morning. I called her and didn't pick up. And because the person chose to be your friend, you forgot that there was a time you were trembling before this person. And that's why lots of people have destroyed relationship and ruined access because they did not learn the principle of honor. How do you keep a door open? You keep a door open by honor. Don't ruin the future by dishonoring the present. Praise God. So the Bible says this, and matter was encumbered with a lot of activity. Matter was busy serving and serving. You can make the sound a bit more distinct for me. It's loud enough. I just need it more distinct for me. Yeah. And matter was serving and encumbered about serving, and she came to him and said, Lord, don't you care that my, my sister has left me to serve alone? And be that to come and help me. She, you know, she was like, I'm serving Jesus, I'm serving you, I'm serving, I'm serving, I'm serving, I'm serving. Don't you care that just and and what just Christ said? And Jesus said unto her, Martha. He says, you're careful about many things and troubled about many things. Then he said, but one thing is needful. You know, you know, 
Jesus was very clear. He says, hey, I, I, know, you, I know you want me to, be, to feel all right, to have a good meal, to sleep well. He said, but there's something that is more important than all of this thing. He said, what is that? He said, and Mary has chosen that path, that good path, and no one can take it from her. You know what I'm saying there's one of the things that in Christianity there are many activities there's, there's singing there's church attendance there's cell there's department but listen to me the at the base of it is there's nothing compared to sitting down at the feet of Jesus and hearing his word the reason why I'm saying that a lot of people brag in activity brag that you sit down at his feet he said to him he said one thing is needful you know, sometimes someone says, how, how, how do you choose your church? Say, the church is close to me. That is not a great reason to choose a church. I want to go to a church where I'm fed spiritually. He said, one thing is needful. Jesus Christ said, out of everything, one thing is needful. What is the most important? Someone says, I like, I, I like having stars. Ah, oh, fine girls, we love Jesus. Hey, fine boys, we love Jesus. Ah, have stars, fine girls. Listen to me. I, I'm not denying we have them. And we have them in abundance. I'm telling you, if you need people to network in business, we have them. This one somebody, we have them. But that cannot be your priority of coming to church. When you come to church, you come to find Jesus. You come to sit down at his feet. Someone said, I, I didn't get a car back. It's not about car park. Park your car. Make it safe and come. Martha was like, um, you know, um, what do you call it? I'm preparing this. I'm preparing that. And I'm saying so because some of you, you have a big heart to serve Jesus. You have a big heart to work for blood. And that's wonderful. But there's nothing as important about than sitting and hearing and learning at the feet of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, this is the biggest thing. He said, Martha, one thing is needful. He said, and guess what? And Martha was confused. More, more important than serving you, he said, one thing is needful. Something is more important than being in the workforce, taking in God's word. And the question I want to ask you today, because this is the first teaching, can you please prioritize God's word in your life? Can you please prioritize and normalize sitting down and hearing God's word? Can you prioritize that every day when I wake up, I, I read God's word. Can you prioritize every day when I wake up, I watch a sermon. Can you prioritize that? Because Jesus looks at Martha. He didn't say, giving this, all those are important. He looked at Martha and said, hey Martha, one thing is needful. And what is needful? Sitting down and hearing the word of God. You can't come to church once in a month and grow spiritually. It's impossible. You can come to church on every Sunday and listen to a sermon that is 40 minutes and grow. Listen to me. You spend 40 minutes listening to a message and you spend 10 hours listen, watching Instagram. You will grow more Instagram than grow the word. I love my Bible. I'm telling you, sometimes you just, every year, let me tell you something. Every year, one of my first goals in life is to read the Bible. To read it more than I did last year. To read it all day. To read from chapter to chapter. It's always my goal every year. Do you have a Bible goal? As an adult, can you recite all the chapters, all the books of the Bible? Or when they say Zephaniah, you say, uh huh. Uh huh. Zephaniah. Zephaniah. Uh huh. Ah, Zephaniah, Zephaniah. Praise God. Some of you just come to church. You didn't bring Bible at all. I want to ask, what did you come and do? No, is it not true? When you're going for exam, you carry Bible. Yes or no? When you're going to embassy, you carry passport. Yes or no? When you're driving, you carry driver's license. When you come to church, what should you carry? You're not carrying your bag. You've, let me tell you something. You, 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 have, you have misplaced your priority. When you come to church, leave the bag and carry Bible. It's okay without shoe, but it must become with Bible. He said, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Do you know there's some of you, 
The minimum scripture you should know should be equal to your age. If you are 40, you should have 40 memory verses in your head. If you are 40, at least what? 40 memory verses. From different books. Not that when they say, turn, they say, turn to Jude. You know, say, hmm. You now go to Psalms. I'll be looking for Jude in Psalms. Praise God. Do you know there are some Christians that cannot tell us what the 12 names of the apostles are? 12 names of the apostles. Meanwhile, you know David, David's song? You know Ashake's song? Which other song? Bonaboy's song? Whiskey's song? All those songs. But 12 names of apostles. The apostles that died 2,000 years ago, that has not changed. They've been teaching you since when in Sunday school. Now you are 40 years old. You don't know 12 names of the apostles. And I say, I know the names now. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Judas Iscariot. Who oh, would forget Judas Iscariot? I say, Thomas, Thomas, Thomas. He gets so good. Thomas, Thomas, Thomas. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Peter, 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 Peter. Then someone said, ah, I don't know it, but I've forgotten it. And I know it. You are not a serious Christian. You are not a serious Christian. Glory to God. He says, one thing is needful. One thing is needful. You must, you, it must, you must make some habit and say, no Bible, no breakfast. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. We, we're taking that challenge this, this morning. No Bible, what? No breakfast. No scripture, no supper. You become a man of the word. You, 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 you lay, see, let me tell you something. Some of you, maybe someone bought you an iPhone. Ah! Listen to me. There's a way the Bible can chew you. There's a way the Bible can challenge you. It can trigger joy inside. Praise God. Some people, when they wear Chelsea, even though there's no gold, they're so excited. They say, hey, my club, oh, but he has not scored in three months. It's not scored. The Bible is a goal, but you're not shouting. Every scripture is a hit. Every verse is always trending. Wow, wow, wow. What a book, what a book. Say, I love my Bible. Every verse is a hit. Every chapter trending. Glory to God. Jesus said, one thing is needful. One. You're looking for marriage? One thing is needful. Looking for a child? One thing is needful. You want a job? One thing is needful. He said, the word of God is the foundation. He said, before any other thing, one thing is needful. Without the word of God, there can't be breakthroughs. Because the Bible says, it does everything by his word. Someone say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Why is the word of God important? First Peter chapter 2 verse 2. Somebody say glory. First Peter chapter 2 verse 2. Let's go ahead and read. So when you come to church, how do you know if someone says, how do I know if I prioritize the Bible? One, when you read the Bible, do you write? Everything in your life that is important, you have it as a document. Yes or no? Do you have a Bible document where I write important things? There's a place you kept your account number. There's a place you kept your BVN number. The things God tell you, where do you keep it? That one is in your head. Glory to God. Someone say, I, I, I don't pass on my BVN is in my head. But before it was in your head, your account number was in your head. It was first written somewhere. So that, that's what you do. The, very powerful. I don't even prioritize the Bible. Number two, do you have a Bible study plan? Or this is how you read your Bible. 
I have a wonderful treasure. Bah! Have you noticed when you open the Bible like that, you are always reading the book of Psalms? Have you noticed? Should I tell you the reason why? Because Psalms is the center page of the Bible. It's not as if God is speaking to you from Psalms. Psalm is the center page of the book is in the center. There's a story of a man. He just said, Lord, speak to me that I may speak. This, that this, that I may speak. Bah! He just saw. And Judas hung himself. <laughs> he said, Lord, this must be a mistake. He closed it back. He said, Lord, speak to me that I may speak. But this, that this. He just said, bam! And the Bible says, and go and do likewise. <laughs> The scripture he found was, and go and do likewise. Just close it. No, I come against this in Jesus' name. He also said, and they, 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 bam. And he said, and what that do was do quickly. From that day, he knew that your, your Bible study method cannot be flipping the Bible. If, you want, if you're serious about Bible study, you must have what? A Bible study plan. I read Matthew chapter 1 today. I read chapter 2 tomorrow. I read chapter 3 tomorrow. So why is it important to why is it important to study the Bible? First Peter 2, verse 2. See what the Bible says. Let's read it together. Once to go. As newborn babes, do what? Desire the sincere make of the word that you may what? Without he said the word of God is food for the spirit. Some of you here, yeah, your life apple. Is that not true? What's your best meal? What's your best meal? Yeah, tell me. Oh? Pounded yam. What's your best meal? What? Jollof fries. What's your best meal, man? beans and plantain everybody has a best meal he said the word of god is our own jollof he's the jollof of our spirits he's the pounded yam of our spirits he's the apple of our spirit he's the spaghetti of our spirit he's the pasta of our spirits so what happens when you don't eat for three days three days is too long some people just till 3 p.m <laughs> What's wrong? We are fasting. That's why we are fasting. My head is turning me. Everything is shaking. I don't even know. This building looks double, you know. And the reason why they say because they're not eating. What happens when you have not fed your spirit for one month? No wonder when they say come to church. Oh, I can't want to come to church. No wonder sin can just overcome you anyhow because you don't have strength. Your friend just says, okay, okay, okay. Just, just, just. Just take <laughs> what, what was it? Weed, right? Yeah. Uh, just puff. Normally, when you have the word in you, you are strong enough to say no. In the office, just say one girl walk behind. Your eyes just that your eyes are following her. As you're trying to return the eye, the eye is going by itself. And the reason why is this the reason why is that because you're not strong on the word. Once you have the word, there's strength to say no. The word of God makes you strong. He says, He says, as newborn babe, desire the systemic of the word that you may what grow thereby. You have to desire it. So the first thing you have to train yourself to desire it. If you don't have it, train yourself. To desire the word of God. Let the word of God be sumptuous to you. You know, when I was younger, I never used to like salads. But as I grew older, I knew I could not eat all the things I used to like to eat before. When I was younger, ooh, I love Mars. I love chocolate. All this bunny. I love those things. But as I grew older, I had to change my appetite. Because if I don't change my food, I will destroy my life. Even though I'm praying. And let me say something to you here. It's hypocrisy to claim that you will have divine health and keep eating things that will destroy your body. The Bible says faith without works is dead. And many of you are not taking care of your health right now. And you are claiming that the Lord will sustain my health. Listen to me. Faith without works is dead. If you are believing for long life, if you are believing for good health, believing to be a hundred, you must be living in such a way that will keep your body sustained. If you bash a car, you buy another car. If you buy, if you burn a house, you buy another house. If you destroy your body, it's only one. Take care of your health. Praise God. Take care of your health. 
you'll just be all of a sudden just getting so much weight you know just everything is just not right as I said, it's not it's most of the time some people are big you know i understand that but some people just carelessness in eating wake up at 12 midnight and you're eating all the sugar just remember you only have one body whatever way you treat it when you're old it will present its results to you someone say hallelujah so as newborn babe desire the ceramic of the word so you need so i was telling you i said i used to like you know like all of this food but i changed now the food i the, you know it's amazing yesterday i was eating broccoli i said who had imagined in my life that i will eat broccoli and i will love it but the thing is that i trained myself it was not easy but i trained myself to love healthy food healthy food has its own special taste but over time you learn to appreciate it so the question is train yourself to love the word how do you train yourself when you see me teach like this then we, we don't just sit down bring me a chair this i made sit down in church you will see them and see me i'm not even interested see this let me show you i want to train you how to desire the word you come to church Uh, uh, pastor is you've shown you're not interested when you are when you are signing a deal is that you sit down you sit on the table yes sir yeah yeah at the interview you sit on you're sitting up train yourself when the world is going on sit up we're looking at this you're writing it's also what should i do everything you can remember be writing and it's what yes you're training yourself when you see people that are watching football in the stadium, they don't sit down like this. Oh, no, everybody's on their seat. It's on at the edge of their seat. Train you. you are training yourself to deserve the word. Oh, and it's more than why. My God, my God, my God. Praise God. Is that now you learned football? All of you that are passionate about football, there was a time you were not passionate, yes or no? But you caught on. You train yourself. This ass can be built. Praise God. You see, you are not training yourself because now you're, you, when you train yourself, when I say, hey, your job is a hallelujah. Come on, God, come and shake me, my brother. God bless you. This is a correct, but you are learning well. Don't be like your neighbors are sitting down. Praise God. You train yourself. You, you will allow the world to excite you. You allow the world to excite you. You allow the world to turn you on. You allow the world to charge you. Praise God. When you hear things like the Lord is my shepherd, let your head swear. Hey, you know, sometimes sometimes I forget I'm preaching to you because when I recite some scriptures, I will just lose control. Praise God. I said, Praise God. He says, new bomb, the desire, desire. Do it. It's a creative desire. When you're reading your Bible, say, honey, I'm reading my Bible. Ah, he said, my, this, is, this, this is hot. Ah, today's hot. See what Peter said. See what Paul said. Ah, your wife wonder, ah, hey, if I knew you, he said, ah, I desire the word so much. I'm eating the word voraciously. Bro, the word is voraciously. Praise God. I said, praise God. Say, I love the word of God. Say, I love the word. Oh, 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 if you have a Bible, hold your Bible, hug it. Say, I love the word of God. 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 God. You're catching up. You're catching up. These people here are catching up. Do you love the word of God? On the gallery, do you love the word of God? In the other churches, you love the word of God. Say, I love the word of God. Praise God. When you're coming to church, you come with your you come with your Bible, come with your notes, you come with your pen. Pa, 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 pa. So, so what do you write? I write important things. The reason why is that if God knows you value what He says, He will talk to you more. And whatever you value, you write down. Oh, Ah, I love the word of God. Sometimes when I don't feel like praying, I just have to read two or three scriptures. My head will spin. My head will spin.
my head will spin because the word of God I've allowed I've trained myself over time to allow the word of God challenge me I've just been meditating on recent you can tell when I found the scripture or I meditated on it Psalm 24 the Bible says the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof you know what that means? whatever anybody owns their tenants he said the earth is the Lord the fullness oh wow you, you know the English doesn't say it well the, the Yoruba says and everything trust me the Yoruba version the Yoruba version says Tioluwa nile ati ekure ekure means everything in it belongs to him so how would they not give me the contracts they are only managers they are only custodians they are only tenants the earth is the lord and the fullness thereof they will not give me visa me 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 the earth is the lord and the fullness thereof they will not give me the contract me 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 the earth is the lord and the fullness thereof i will not find husband what do you mean me, 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 the edge is the Lord and the fullness the Ayakoraba Shaya Gabalaba Sote Kabala Dehaba Alanto Kaba Suskabaya. This changes the way you talk. This changes the way you go for contract. There's a confidence. There's, you can take off this chair. There is spring in your step. Are you there? There's spring in your step. You know, as you go, your father owns it. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Oh, somebody shout, I receive it. Why are you still sitting? We are catching something, though. Because the way you are sitting now, I don't know if you are hungry. Say, The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Your scholarship, it has to come. I say, be why? The edge is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Oh, somebody shout, I receive it. Please, you can have your seat. You know, you see that scripture, we say, with long life will I satisfy you. So when people are planning to die at 50, 70, Tupac, is it Tupac that says he will die soon or, or what, the green or something like that? It's the green. And he died like that, right? I don't talk that way. Wait, long life. Will I what? Let me explain what that means to you. This, this you know, I think of the Bible in pictures. I think like, God will save me life like food. So when I've eaten like 80 years, he said, Do you, are you satisfied? I said, no, sir. At 25. And, and when you think it's impossible to believe, I look like mama. At 100. No wheelchair. Coming to church every Sunday. And what God does for one, shows what's available for others. Hey, with long life, will I satisfy? Somebody shout hallelujah. He said the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Oh glory to God. He didn't say either dollar is 2,000 or pounds is 10,000 in every season. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not turn. If I need dollar, I have it. If I need pounds, I have it. The money comes everywhere. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Are you ready for this? I am your Koba Shate. I attract help without complications. I attract wealth without sorrow. Because the Bible said the blessing of the Lord, He's make a rusata, He make it rich and added no sorrow to it. If you believe, shout amen. I say shout amen. Jump on your feet and shout amen. Please, you can have your seat. As you're taking in the word, your faith will be popular. Ruskata. All of a sudden, you are so bold, you are so strong. Why? Because 
I'm feeding on the word. Because the word is food for my spirits. I'm feeding on the word. Someone says, with all you've been to, you're not depressed. How can I be depressed? I'm feeding on the word. In the morning, hey, in the morning, I, I get up, I read my Bible. In the evening, I have a CD. I'm playing the messages again. I'm feeding on the word. And you know why the word is powerful? You become what you hear. You become what you eat. So as you eat the word, you become that. As you hear the word, you become it. The problem is that you are hearing the wrong things. So the wrong things are happening. Hear the right things. Glory to God.